quorum. Please rise. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Any discussion on the minutes of the last meeting? If not, do I have a motion to pass the minutes? I make a motion that we uh, pass the minutes from uh, the last meeting. I have a second. Second. Would you like to take a, a roll? Greg Van Laer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye. The motion is passed four to Mr. President, uh, next on your agenda is public comment. We do have our one request to speak tonight. Right. Uh, Crystal Bow, am I saying it correctly? Yes. Thanks. You. Yep. She would like to speak to you about uh, raising chickens in the chickens in the town limits. How are you? I'm well. How are you? State your name. Pull Wait. that microphone down by you. Oh yeah, sure. You can I'm pull right. it down. I'm short. <laughs> Be what about this? There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, my name is Christelle Bow. I am a eight-year resident here in the town of Danville. I live at 6 Danridge Drive, and actually, you could practically see my house from here. I'm just, um, I back right up to the playscape. Um, you can see here, what else was I supposed to tell you? There it is on the, okay. on the map there. This is it right oh, here. Come forward. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, are you pulling it up there? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Okay, 6 Danridge, up at the top. All the way, oh, you're almost there. Go up, right, right, yep. right so there. right there. Okay. Nope, I'm sorry, one more, one more. Thank you. Yep. Okay, um, so the reason why I've asked to speak with you this evening, first, I want to say thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. Um, <clears throat> I appreciate my time as well as your time, the time that you've given the town. So thank you for that. Sorry, right here, okay. I also have allergy, got allergy shots today, so my voice is a little hoarse. Um, <clears throat> I am here because a complaint was filed to the town about me raising chickens in town limits. The complaint is, um, as I understand, is not that we were doing it inhumanely, that we were not maintaining our property, um, that the chickens were not cared for. It was just simply that we're in violation of the town ordinance for harboring, keeping, and maintaining poultry and fowl in the town limits. So <clears throat> I've come to you to ask for a review of the policy and possibly a revision to the policy. In light of COVID-19 and all the restrictions that we've been um, under over the last couple of months, I have found that it is really imperative to learn to be more sustainable in our home. So we have started creating a sustainable homestead on our property where we've built a bigger garden. We took the time to um, build a coop. We learned how to build a coop, my, my husband and my children and I. And um, we have started raising chickens so that we can raise our own meat and we can have fresh eggs in the morning. Um, to help us when we're not able to get to the grocery store and things. Um, so <clears throat> I want to apologize <laughs> that I did know. I, I knowingly and willingly violated the town ordinance on that. I looked it up before we decided to buy chickens, but going into the quarantine and after spending a week in quarantine and <clears throat> not being able to buy eggs and meat at the grocery store, not being able to buy toilet paper and cleaning supplies at the grocery store for for my family. I, I thought there was a need. There's a need for me to um, be able to provide for my family. So um, this was not an opportunity to come and speak to you guys then, so I made the decision to um, just go ahead and move forward with that process. We are actually extremely excited about the opportunity to have a food source in our home and on our property that we don't have to worry about where it's coming from. Um, poultry is one of the top imports from Brazil, and although the United States is the top poultry producer, it is also one of the top, um, top imported livestock. So it's concerning to me when we have to be, um, we have to be cautious about what we bring into our home, what we touch where are these things coming from? It's concerning to me that I'm not able to raise chickens in 
in my yard and to uh, be able to provide a clean, safe environment, not only for the chickens, but um, a resource for food for my children on the table that I, I know where they come from and I know that it is, it's, it's a sterile item, it's a safe item for us to consume. Um, I also want to share with you, I, I have a bachelor's degree in liberal, liberal arts and I spent a full semester studying, studying sustainability for the city of Indianapolis. It's allowed in the town, um, well in Indianapolis, it's allowed in the town of Avon with limits. And um, knowing that I was coming here this evening, I reached out some to my neighbors. And um, for the most part, I got their approval. I have one neighbor that will not speak to me. I think that that's probably the neighbor that filed the complaint. Um, <clears throat> but then I made a post on Facebook just asking the community, like, is it just me? Do I have chicken dreams? Or is this really something that the, the residents of um, the town would really like to have? And thank you. And, um, I would say over 90% of the people that commented were like, we are for it, we would love to have it, please, please approach the town and ask them if this can be a possibility with restrictions. Well, thank you very much for your talk there. Uh, well, does anybody want to start uh, with their, what they feel about this? We've already passed an ordinance for no chickens. Right. I think the reason for that was because they had, I, I had chickens in Australia and we had mice and rats and snakes would come and had snakes eating eggs. We had snakes eating the rats and, and chickens mm -hmm. don't smell very well. We have a lovely farming community around us and anyways, I, that's the reason why we didn't um, pass that. When, when was uh, uh, that ordinance passed? I'd have to look to be honest with you. It's been some time ago. Uh, in doing some research, I found um, that this has been a topic in the town of Danville through looking at minutes, council minutes, back to the 1950s. Um, now, our latest ordinances uh, probably would have been around, I would guess, 2009 to 2006 would be my guess. They may be older than that. That was probably the first codification of our ordinances. Again, I didn't bring it with me tonight. I apologize. I can go get it if you want. Uh, but um, I, I can recall... Air Chief, I, I know of at least five times where it's been brought before the council. Um, usually the room, um, there were people on both sides of the fence, and not to be funny. Uh, but um, <laughs> um, I believe Caitlin has something legal. Has something. I guess I, I feel like it should be something that us as a full council should should revisit, you know, I mean, just at least have a discussion, you know, about it. Um, I prefer work studies for those, but, you know, uh, just my my thought on that. I'm, if I may ask a few questions, yeah, how many chickens, how many chickens do you have? So I have nine. Okay. And, and when did you first acquire your chickens? Uh, the week after... COVID-19, so uh, we went in lockdown on the 16th. I bought them the next week, mm -hmm. so around. And you have ducks as well? I, I do have ducks. How many ducks? I have two ducks. I, I did see. not, that was not my plan. My son bought them for me because he saw how happy the chickens were making me, and he bought the ducks to fill my love bank. You know, my so. wife and I have shopped at Kroger's all this time with not much trouble to okay. get food. With getting chicken and eggs, you're saying? Ma'am? With, with, you said you shopped at Kroger and you yeah. had much All issue? This time I'm sorry. We've been shopping at Kroger's and we managed to get enough food. Here in Danville, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So can I rebuttal that? Um, yes, please do. That's what. So, yeah. So my mother is a senior. She lives in Indianapolis. My husband is a fireman. He works in the town of Speedway. And it actually has gotten to a point with them through the restrictions, especially the first couple of weeks of the quarantine, where I would go to our stores to pick them up and take them to them because they were not able to get them on the outskirts of Indianapolis and in Speedway. So when you have a, a fire fire uh, department crew of eight men that cannot get eggs for breakfast and um, chicken or beef, um, they were actually tasking him with buying it out here. So uh, our situation has been a little different out here. Um, yeah, I think because I our community is smaller, but 
15 minutes up the road, it has not been the case. How big is your lot? Uh, we have just a half an acre. And, and, and are the, uh, the, the coop that you built, is it in front of the house or behind the house or on the side of the house? It, it is on the side of the house, and we built a small, it's not an enclosed privacy fence, but basically privacy panels um, to, hmm. so, um, so actually, no, that's, that's our garden area. So we're on the right side or on the east side of the property. And um, so as you walk out of our garage, we have a, a six foot panel by six foot panel of just basically a privacy barrier to conceal the coop and um, try to keep the chickens contained. We also have chicken wire that stretches around the area to keep them contained. I know chickens have a cackle noise like and ducks, do they make a noise as well? Um, so we, we have one duck that will make noises in the morning whenever she's hungry. We think it's yeah. a female because she makes the noise. We also have another one that does not make any noises. We think that that's a male. That's pretty typical. Males do not make noises. Females do. I have no problems with getting rid of the ducks, honestly. It was not, it was, <laughs> it was not a purchase that I intended to get. My son just, he, he, was, he was motivated and wanted to feed my love bank, so he went and bought me ducks. I know this is far out, but in Asia... The Chinese use geese for alarms, oh, and uh, okay. you get next to their property, those geese go crazy, and ducks a little bit different, but maybe they have some defense things like yep. that as well. So I was just concerned about your neighbors and noises, Noise. and if you live next to something cackling all the time, and then the odor, uh, being a, a, t a town or a city, right? you know, maybe... Well, so far with the chickens, uh, they're not old enough to really make noises. We don't have any roosters. Um, so we don't have the crowing from the roosters. The chickens do make um, kind of like clucking noises whenever our dogs run around the yard. Whenever they sure. feel threatened, they'll make noises. Um, I've learned that that's part of them trying to scare away the predator as well as them trying to signal me that, hey, there's you know something going on here. We're in distress. Can you come and help us? I know foxes love chickens. Foxes also love squirrels. So we, we have had... Um, we have had a fox, because we back up to the park, so we've had a fox frequent our property since we've bought the property. They love eating the squirrels on our property, um, and they did get two of our two. We originally had four ducks, because tractor supply, you have to buy four um, at a time, and a fox did come in our property in the middle of the day and killed two of the ducks, and um, we, we buried them. And um, so we only have two left as a result, but... Yes, they've, we have had that, that um, incident since we got the chickens, but we have had it more times with them chasing squirrels and chipmunks in our yard prior to this. Right. Uh, anybody else you want to keep going? Yeah, I, I mean, if, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a complaint um, that was brought to the town's attention. Did, yes. you, did you receive a... Um, I received uh, a letter. A letter? Just, yes. Okay. I mean, were you levied a fee or anything? Or a, I'm a, sorry? A, Not yet. I'm, oh, okay. All right. We, we give, we give com, on complaints, we normally give 30 days okay. for compliance before we start talking okay. fees or fines. Well, I, I, was, I, would, I think that we really should have a, a conversation about this. Uh, I personally uh, purchase all my eggs from, from uh, an individual that raises, you know, chickens. Mm -hmm. um, big fan. Big fan of, of that. Um, you know, I also am a big fan of the sustainability and, you know, but also doing things, you know, to where, you know, things are, are smart and, and contained. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I guess I, I feel like, you know, maybe it's something that we should discuss. And I guess I would just maybe ask, uh, you know, management that, you know, no fines or anything be, be levied until we can, you know, you, come sir. to it. We, we won't. Okay. All right. Thank you. When you got the chickens, were you planning on slaughtering them after they quit laying because so, you were talking about chicken yeah. meat y yes so so, part of your plan? Um, I wear my heart on my sleeve and so I'm, I'm very bonded with them at this point so my husband who's a fireman we we've made an arrangement that I would um, raise them and I I do all of the tending to the chickens right now I clean the coop I, I feed them every morning um, if they need you know whatever their needs are I, I helped <laughs> I plant um, bushes for them to hide in, things like that. I do all of the, the nurturing of the chickens, and my husband has agreed to go through the process of slaughtering them and um, 
whatever that process may be. I honestly have not read into that any. I've asked him to do that just to kind of put my heart and my mind at ease and, uh, and know, like, this is my responsibility and this is his responsibility in the process. So, yes, there will be a point where we have to do that, and we do intend to use them for meat. Um, and if we're not able to keep them, he's, he already has a plan. I didn't ask what the plan is. So... How many people in your family? Five. I have five. So five, and I have three teenage sons, which is... Um, so do you eat all your own eggs, or do you give them away to people in the block and all We actually that? don't have eggs yet. That's how little oh, you our don't chickens have eggs are. Yet. We don't have any eggs yet. We're expecting to get eggs probably next month. Um, <clears throat> but we, we have friends uh, in Plainfield and in Avon that give us eggs. My boys will eat 18 to 24 eggs in a setting. I have three teenage boys, and they, they're they all athletes, and they'll eat four eggs on their own. So whenever we whenever we sit down for breakfast, it's it's a massive pan of eggs. So that's another reason, too, why, why raising chickens, they're all wrestlers. So they have to maintain a very strict diet of fish, diet, or a fish um, chicken, and eggs. That's, like, the only things they can yeah, consistently for, have. You know, nine chickens. We had three chickens, and it fed a couple of us okay. Yeah, uh, you know, and I'm fine with it, three. If we did pass it, we don't really want a chicken farm there. Mm -hmm. Business, you know. So yeah. um, I appreciate I think we have a lot, unless somebody else has something more to say. So what do you think about a, a work study? Maybe we pick up some other things for a work study, and we'll put it in that. Put together anything you want, sir. We've got uh, our next meeting is the 15th. Um, we could like have it a half hour before. Do about may I interject on that? Of course, sir. Yeah. Um, I may not be here, and I know, Greg, you wanted to have a full council to discuss that. Y yes, I, I would. There's I mean, a good chance I, I will be here, but I, I can't be certain of that. Yes, sir. So I appreciate everybody's input. So. Let's do it the next meeting. August. So you want to do it in August then? Okay. And then you'd like us to obviously refrain uh, from moving forward with our 30-day notification obviously um, do you want us to see sending letters of complaints on this topic until we've met on this or would you like us to continue to send letters because th these aren't the only complaints we get believe yeah. me yeah. I, think, right. I think you should continue yes, sir. Yeah. but just not yeah. levy any fines Correct. or anything yes, sir. Um, our next <clears throat> meeting would be August the 5th so would you like to do a work study prior to that then? So if something else comes, we'll put it in. But right now, we'll do a half hour before the meeting. Yes, sir. I think that's enough to talk about this together. <clears throat> and if there's nothing else from the council and yourself, ma'am? I, I would just like to know what does the work study entail? Pardon me, ma'am? The work study. It's, uh, it, it, I'm sorry. It allows the, um, the council to speak more freely. Uh, about certain topics, whatever the topic of the work study is. Uh, so it does give them, a, uh, again, a, a decorum where they can just, uh, they don't have to be as proper as they do tonight uh, mm -hmm. sitting in a council meeting. So um, it, it is, it's an open forum, if you know what I'm saying. So you can come and yeah, we don't oh, yeah. make yeah, the decisions there. Yeah. They, yeah, they just can't make, they can't make a vote on anything during that. But what they do conclude during the work study, they can, in fact, bring forth uh, at the meeting. Um, the, on that night, so um, I understand that I'll still get letters about being in violation. That's all I'm going to send. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm not a big tree. I'm not a tree killer. So, so, so as as the deadline, though, for June 19th, I can just continue to wait. So it's on a breeze. Okay. Chief, do you have handcuffs? Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, question I do have for the council. Would you like uh, legal counsel to start preparing uh, some type of restrictions based on other communities that do allow these so that you do have something Let's to discuss? Let's wait until after the work study. You want to wait till after? Okay. Yeah, no right. sense in doing extra work. No worries. We don't know what we're going to say, so. No worries. Just thought I'd be prepared. Yeah, no sense in spending extra money. No. So <laughs> I really appreciate you coming, and uh, you have very nice to talk about that. And we'll try our best. We have passion.
Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. And, and you don't have to stay if you guys don't want to. If you, if this is your topic that you have, you can leave if you'd like. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Are you two together? Okay. I just thought maybe we're waiting for you to talk as well. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Uh, proclamation. You want to say anything before we do this? Uh, tonight, uh, we've presented you, our staff prepared a proclamation to honor Hendricks Regional Health. Um, I don't see anybody from Hendricks here. No. Uh, but uh, uh, it's ready for your guys' perusal and signatures and vote if you choose to. And you can read it tonight and do whatever right. you'd like. I'd like to say something if somebody else wants to say something first. Yeah, what I feel if we do pass this, uh, that we would present this in front of the hospital, it would get some... A good press for the town and the and also the hospital and uh, that's why they're not here so if we do pass it and we'll organize with the hospital where to do it and uh, if it doesn't we won't so any more conversation on the proclamation do I have a motion did you want it read or just you could read it go ahead <clears throat> uh, Hendricks Regional Health whereas the citizens of Danville rely on Hendricks Regional Health and their services to our community where public health is critical to sustaining and improving the community and whereas their quick response during a national pandemic with stretched resources redeployed physicians and staff to the front lines to combat the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic and whereas the town of Danville is honored to celebrate Hendricks Regional Health and the men and women who are on the front lines working tirelessly to help others in their greatest time of need, especially during this period when our town and country are in the throes of the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas the town of Danville recognizes that all the hardworking people who make up our Hendricks Regional Health deserve universal regard and appreciation for keeping our community healthy and safe and urge residents to express their appreciation for the dedicated people, facilities, and technologies that make reliable health care possible in our community. In witness whereof, we have hereunto set our hand and caused the seal of the town of Danville, Indiana, to be affixed this first day of July, the year of 2020. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that by virtue of the authority vested in the town council of the town of Danville in the state of Indiana, do hereby proclaim thanks and recognition to the entire staff of Hendricks Regional Health. Thank you. Do we have a motion to pass the proclamation? I move that we pass this proclamation. Do we have a second? Second. Would you like to take a vote, please? Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye has been passed four to zero thank you very much ordinance b 14 2020 text amendment to zoning ordinance this was already introduced on 617 it is up for adoption will require a vote i was going to say the very same thing you just did so <laughs> you save me save my breath for Thought me I'd save you the time <laughs> Yes, but this was introduced um, and it is up for approval. I hope that I answered Mr. Winter's questions. Um, I have we a didn't actually more. make connection, no, but um, I hope that I answered those questions for you. Yeah, I just have a couple of clarifying, if that's okay. okay. So, um, it, what's the county's uh, percentage? You know, I think they have a square footage and then a uh, square footage of, I, I don't remember the square footage, and then 6% is what okay. theirs is. Okay. So, um, so this 10%, know, how is that calculated? It's going to be calculated for the uh, lot area. Okay. So if you have a half acre, mm -hmm. um, we're going to take that square footage and do okay. the 10%. Okay. okay. So square footage of the total property. Right. And then the the... Square footage of the structure, is that just the footprint? 
that you're looking yes. at? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So theoretically, if one has 15,000 square feet uh, on their property, they could have as much as a 1,500 square foot? Total for total. all for all accessory structures. Okay. So they could have, maybe they have a 1,000 square foot mini barn and a 500 square foot gazebo or something like that. Okay. So. And does, uh, that doesn't count the garage or anything like that that's considered part of the main structure. if the garage is an accessory if it's not connected it to it, yeah it, then, whether it is or not yeah right okay it is not okay and things like this is, is there ever an opportunity for a citizen to say i have an unusual situation absolutely absolutely this does not take away the opportunity to ask the board of zoning appeals for a variance okay what we're hoping to do is minimize the number of variances that are being requested. I see. Um, and I think, you know, because we have the RE1 um, zoning de designation now, we have some larger lots in town, and that's what's created a lot of this. Because, well, I take where I live, for instance, we have 10 acres. And so we have plenty of room to have more than, I don't know what the square foot, than a thousand square foot building. So. You know, in situations like that, that's where you were starting to see a lot of variances. So hopefully this will, it's not going to eliminate the need for a variance, but it's going to hopefully diminish some of the need. Okay. So if someone has a 15, it's 15% they could potentially get a variance to, yes. for that to be allowed. Um, yep. I just think about the unintended consequences, but as long as there's still that avenue to. Yes, they still have that okay. avenue. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Any more discussion? We have a motion to approve. I would make a motion that we approve ordinance 14-2020. <laughs> I have a second. I'll second it. A motion and a second. Could you please take the roll? Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Motion's been passed four to zero. Thank you Thank very you. much, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. C, ordinance 18-2020. <clears throat> Ordinance to amend the I, fee schedules. I'll take care of it. I'm sorry. Um, Mark, do you want to yes, chat with us? Yes, if you don't mind, sir. Yeah, um, I think you do. What happened at, on Ordinance 11 2020, which you passed about two or three meetings ago, I think it was, uh, during the initial draft of that ordinance, there were fees that were on there, and for some reason, when we got to the final ordinance, they were missing. So basically what Ordinance 18 does, it cleans up those ones that were missing. Um, they are very important ordinances or uh, fees because um, they have a lot to do with our newer construction. And we're right now seeing a great deal of newer construction. So yes. uh, we want to make sure we get these in place uh, so that we're not trying to burden uh, our taxpayers. Uh, we're, we're going to tack those fees onto the, the builders and the new, new homes. So. Um, we are asking if the council is willing uh, to um, suspend the rules and, and pass this tonight if possible, uh, only because, again, we, we have to advertise these and to get them into effect. So, um, again, it's your decision. Um, Caitlin, do you know if one's missing the, as long as they I have the... Um, <clears throat> Okay. I make a motion. Council feel you want to? Nope. Side note on uh, the Helton Courts one hourly minimum. They did pass in the park. Board. What was that again? Hourly three? It's just minimum of two. Minimum of two. Three okay. Three two. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> okay. Caitlin, can we do that with that amendment? Can we still pass it with the amendment? It's above you um, where it says hourly minimum three. Uh, Will said that should have been two. Okay, thank you. Okay. I would make a motion that we suspend the rules to address this tonight. I have a second. Second. Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Rules are suspended. So, no more discussion. Do I have a motion to pass it? I'd make a motion that we pass um, Amendment 18-2020, uh, 
with the uh, adjustment to the hourly minimum of two versus three. Do I have a second? Second. Courtney, please take a roll. Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Motion has been fast, four to zero. Thank you very much. You're welcome. D, Ordinance 19 2020, Ordinance to Amend Parking on the Square. Mr. President, we come for you tonight to amend the town's parking ordinance on the square. Um, this was brought to our attention by Mr. Vornholt. Um, Jerry, do you remember how long ago that was? It was probably back in the spring, maybe. So um, we, we looked into it. We found that um, the parking space was in, um, and it was in our ordinance. I mean, it, it was legal. Uh, Mr. Winters brought it up at the last meeting. We had a citizen's complaint probably three days later about it. So we went ahead and looked into it again. Um, we researched this back to 2009. When, uh, they were doing um, parking studies around the square. As it turned out in uh, 2009, the... Um, the yellow on that corner was reduced and then so then new parking spaces were put in and the town advertised that they added over 90 new spaces to the town of Danville new parking spaces um, great marketing tool um, you know there was a lot of feedback of wanting more parking unfortunately when that occurred that parking space not only ran into the crosswalk, it also covered the ADA compliant ramps. And so uh, a couple of years ago, the public works kind of didn't paint that last white line to try and be in more compliance with ADA. And then last year they hired a company to come in and do some of the painting and the company basically pulled our ordinance out. They looked at it, they painted it the way the ordinance states. I mean, they didn't do anything wrong, you know? So what I've come to you tonight is to uh, extend the no parking on that corner from 27 feet to 39 feet. That would allow us to paint that corner all yellow, um, eliminate that one parking spot, and keep vehicles, well, I shouldn't say that vehicles may park there illegally, but at least we'll be able to ticket them if they park there. Um, so, and just so you know, uh, on the 15th of this month, I'll be coming back to you with an almost identical ordinance. It'll probably be number 20 because we found another one uh, over the last three days at Jefferson and Marion that literally, um, when you look at the stripe, it is on the ADA ramp. The ramp. <laughs> yeah, it's sit literally sitting on the ramp. I've, I, I don't know how else to describe it. So um, we, we definitely want to get rid of that as well. So uh, it should be an easy fix. but. Uh, so, Mark, would you prefer that we handle these separately, or it, it would be best because, uh, again, what I'd like to do to, is if you if you will suspend the rules again on this one, I hate asking you to do that, but then I can get Public Works out there tomorrow with, uh, um, as Will calls it, elephant snot. Um, <laughs> supposedly, it's something that takes the uh, paint off of the concrete and the pavement. I, I don't know, but. Um, We'd like to go ahead and get that process started, obviously, and get those lines painted yellow. So, will there be any signage added? There should not be. I don't. I mean, you don't think they, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. It it should be clear when we paint that yellow. We can put, you know, out of fairness, we can put something up for a couple of days or a week that says it's no parking now. I don't have a problem with that. Like put That's a cone true. up or something. Yeah. Okay, so you'd like us to suspend the rules. If you don't mind, sir, yes, Caitlin, sir. that's fine. Okay, do I have a motion? I make a motion that we suspend the rules to address this this evening. Do you have a second? Second. Courtney? Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Motion's been passed, four to zero. Thank you. Thank you. That's that was yeah. suspend the rules. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. So I would make a motion that we uh, approve ordinance 19-2020. Uh, and I will second it. Okay. Yeah. Greg Van Leer. Aye. Levitt. Aye. 
Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Motion's been passed, four to zero, sorry. Okay. <clears throat> now, Mark, yes. there you have. Uh, yeah, we'll sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I sent you an email earlier today. Um, Superintendent Matt Ellison of the Water Department had a uh, filter that uh, basically quit working on one of the uh, cleaning agents in his facility. It, it has, he has to have it. It's really considered an emergency situation. Fortunately, though, uh, they can't get the part in and get it installed until the 15th, so we thought it would be a good opportunity to go ahead tonight and ask you for the capital expenditure request. Uh, I've talked with Mrs. Piercy. Uh, Matt has the money in his budget to purchase this, uh, and I've approved it. It's $5,747 uh, to purchase uh, this new filter that he needs. So I'm looking for uh, approval tonight if, uh, if you see fit. Could you do that now, Mark? Yes, sir, please. Do we just generally approve it, or do you want a motion and a... And a vote. Uh, I'll just need, I'll need a, a, a vote, I assume, since we're up spending over the $5,000. So I'll need a motion and a vote. I'd make a motion that we uh, approve the uh, uh, expenditure for a filter. <clears throat> second. Filter. Second. I second. Yeah. Roll call. Okay. I'm Greg Van Lair. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Tom Pato. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Motion's been passed, four to zero. On behalf of Superintendent. Uh, Ellison, I thank you very much. You're welcome. He would also like uh, to make sure everyone knows as we start getting into summer months that uh, he's requested the departments within the town to try and conserve water, uh, which would normally be fire, public works and parks. So uh, he's asked them to uh, uh, refrain from un unnecessary usage uh, until we know that the uh, water tables are going to be back where they're supposed to be. And then I've also got a couple other things, if the council would like to hear them. Please. Um, the artist that painted the bison that's currently by our water fountain on the uh, square by the courthouse has expressed concern that uh, this weekend with the uh, rumor of uh, protesting, uh, she's worried that the bison may receive vandalism or could be destroyed. So she's asked that we uh, have it removed. Um, we had no place really to remove it to, so I checked with the county, and the county's willing to store it out at the old fairgrounds next to the jail. Um, all we have to do is get it there, and they said they'd be happy to store it there. Um, we started looking at a, and working with Mr. Cavanaugh, we're looking at a more permanent solution uh, for the location of the bison. And between he and I, we believe a good fit would be the fairgrounds, the entrance to the new fairgrounds, uh, to that main building. Uh, they've talked like uh, as they time would pr uh, be available, they would put a permanent pad out there so that they could have the bison out there on a permanent fixture. But I just need consensus from the council to move forward with this starting tomorrow. I'll take a general consent. Go ahead. Yeah. I, I guess I got a concern that what, what's the update on supposed Protests. I've not heard a word. I've not heard uh, anything. Either. Uh, Chief Hilton, have you heard anything? Okay, that's the. We're all in the same boat. But uh, right. this is the second request the artist has made of me to move that. She made a request of me last year to move it because the paint was fading and cracking, and I didn't have any place to move it then either. Um, so, are there any other? I'm trying to think. What? How many others are there? Is there any, anything else we're concerned about? Not Being at this vandalized. point. Okay. I, I know uh, uh, Mr. Pato brought up the war uh, memorials. Um, according to, again, uh, <clears throat> Assistant Town Manager Lacey, this picks this elephant snot will take anything off. So um, he says it's really good. For, yeah, he, 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 they have a lot of graffiti at the park. At a skate, at a skate park? Elephants, not at a skate park? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm, they, they, <laughs> he's assured me that it'll take about anything that you can produce to get it off of there. Okay. Well, I hope it doesn't do that. You talking about them? They're at. Oh, yeah. Pretty tough, it's pretty tough to protect that. Um, um, we hope nobody will touch it. Wow. Never thought of that. Yeah. 
So we, we would have public works move the. Uh, <clears throat> and I've talked with Superintendent Whitaker and Assistant Superintendent uh, Alby, and they're good with no moving issues. tomorrow. Yep. All right. I'm fine with it. That's okay, right. you want to have a general consensus on this? Yeah. We all okay. agree to move it? Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank Why you. Why don't you move that? Unfortunately. All right. We will. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just a couple updates. Uh, we're hoping to pour concrete next week for the outdoor dining uh, at the Mayberry and the um, in front of uh, courthouse grounds. So we're, we're on their work schedule. Let's put it that way. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, we're, we were scheduled to pick the picnic tables up next week because we told all the businesses that we would let them stay until July the 4th. However, with the governor's 4.5 opening, uh, we'll probably let them stay a little bit longer. Superintendent Lacey's advised me he doesn't need them for a little bit longer, so we're good to go there. Um, we may, I'm assuming the concert on the square is still going to go, so we'll probably keep bring some up for that, you know, and, and remove some. Uh, but uh, so far, they've been very well received. Um, I, I've had not heard any complaints, and everything I've heard from the public, they seem to be, again, well received. So. I have one quick question, Mark. Yes, sir. Uh, when we make those, we start laying out concrete, how many total parking spaces are we eliminating? Four. Four, okay. Yeah. We'll eliminate four on Jefferson Street. And we're going to shorten probably three on Washington. Um, yeah, the, the the plans I've seen so far only eliminate those four lateral uh, or parallel spots. All right. Okay. On your department head reports, um, police department uh, is in, was interviewing 24 people. They started off with 150. Uh, so. Uh, Pretty amazing there. Uh, all their pool vehicles are down. Uh, they've got uh, issues with uh, vehicles, so they've issued all their pool vehicles out. Uh, Brian Everling is retired. Um, they are working on their SOP manual updates, and um, they have an intern, Carrie, who started. Uh, all the body cams are on for all the officers. There are some storage issues, but we've been working with One Choice to try and f figure out what we can do with that. And they will be busy blocking the roads for the 4th of July. DPW, again, traffic for 4th of July. Um, they, um, they've been mowing and landscaping. And, of course, uh, they're working on the current sidewalk 50-50 program that we have. And so they've been working on that. Our department's been reading meters, uh, submitting monthly reports to the state. They did finish drilling uh, the well. It said it really looked good. And, of course, they were doing filter maintenance when the one filter gave up on them. Uh, fire department, uh, they're in a hiring process with Avon. Um, July 20th, 22nd, they'll be doing interviews. Uh, fire department has three openings. Uh, they'll be utilizing their grass rig for July 4th. They've had 53 runs for the month. Uh, they are working on uh, having ISO come out and do a re-rating. Uh, it's pretty exciting. Uh, I tried for years to get ISO to come out, so kudos to Chief Roberts for twisting someone's arm to get them to come out because uh, they kind of run on their own schedule. Uh, they've been doing water and fire flow testing, I'm sure, to get ready for the ISO rating. Uh, wastewater is getting the VAC truck upgraded. Uh, they've been working on some free booklets uh, for the public, and they're working on some street cuts and getting those filled. Uh, building stormwater, uh, Woodland Terrace is moving along. Uh, the sidewalk cuts are being replaced by Miller Pipeline. I'm sure you've seen the concrete forms out there. Uh, they're doing a really good job. Uh, I've been impressed with them. Um, we've, our tenants moved in today upstairs and uh, cut us our first six-month check, so that was exciting. Um, the uh, building moisture has been high, and so they're working on dehumidifying. Uh, Park uh, is working on our town hall landscaping. And uh, working on camera projects, which should start soon. I think we wrote the claim for the first half. Um, he has three Eagle Scout projects in the works. Uh, he's been working with Downtown Partnership. Uh, one of his big projects lately is working with our insurance company to replace all the roofs that we had damaged uh, uh, about a month and a half, two months ago in uh, the wind damage. So, And then... Uh, 
we are putting plans together, working on um, computers for all of you uh, that we talked about the last meeting. Uh, we think we have, I think we've got some really good solutions as far as uh, um, the ones up there. Our biggest concern was blocking your visibility uh, with a monitor. So we've figured out that, yeah, so we figured out a way to lay them down at an angle. Um, we think it's going to work out pretty nicely. So um, myself, our office manager, and the planner during the department head meeting Monday were all dealing with um, complaints, so we didn't get a chance to really uh, add a lot to this. And uh, so I don't have anything else to report. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank that you. Looks pretty good. Thank you. Oh, about the monies, the 39000 Yes, sir. Um, do we have anywhere to talk about that today? We can talk about it right now, sir. Let's talk about it. So mm -hmm. the grants that we gave out are finished. Mm -hmm. They've applied, and we've decided on 19 people. That's correct, sir. So we have um, 20000 left. Right. And we spoke about taking that money and doing something with the police department right. and possibly marketing for the town. Right. So how do we make that happen? We'll need to work with the clerk treasurer to identify what accounts she's taking out the initial 19000 out of. Yes. Um, if it's host, it's, it, is, it should be a, uh, the rest of it. Well, I shouldn't say that. Edit can be used for any lawful form. So it might be the easiest to turn around and utilize for... Um, advertising and and the police vests and things like that uh, she's going to be the expert on that to be honest with you but uh, we'll work with clerk treasurer and identify um, what we can do with that um, one of the things that um, will and i've been talking about when we we're talking about the economic um, impact money am i saying it right not stimulus right okay um, but we talked about what can we do for the town as a whole and one of those was advertising, trying to market our town. And um, there's a couple people in the chamber that do marketing that we think would be a good fit for what we're trying to do mm -hmm. and, and try and market our town. And, and what we discussed, three or four phases uh, doing, uh, one, the town itself and the amenities that we offer, and then uh, the businesses, and then I think of some tourism, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. Yeah. Right. 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 I think that's wonderful. Yeah. We figure the I think this better is we, good timing for we, that. The better we get our word out, the better off we'll be. Okay. A comment about the police. Uh, Chief, <clears throat> we really want to make this go. I, I think everybody does want to have you go as fast as you can on your reserves and your hiring, considering what's going on in the world. Is there anything we can do to help you go a little quicker? Or? The reserve process, the merit board has their own attorney, so it's in the hands of her and the merit board at this time. They're trying to develop a program of what the hiring process will look like for the reserves. So right now we're just waiting for them to develop that so I can get moving on. And like you helping me out with some invest money, that would be helpful. So that's what we're waiting on right now. The hiring process for the full-time officers we conducted our interviews, and I'll let you guys know that we're down to nine people after the interviews. So okay. we're going to move forward with that. I'm waiting for the attorney to answer me on that, and uh, we'll get started with a truth verification process, or CVSA, next. Does the council agree with me that the sooner we could put this through, the better for the police department? <clears throat> I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I can't speak for Chief Hilton. I know when I was fire chief, one of the things, we, Danville was considered a combination fire department. We had uh, career professionals, and we also had uh, what we called home response, uh, what they may have been called in the past were volunteers. And I can tell you that when we hired volunteers or, or home response, uh, one of the things that we looked for is that the end user, which is the citizens, did not see a difference that when we responded to their house, there's no way they could tell the difference between a career professional and, and one of our paid on call. The training was the same, uh, the physical requirements were the same, and, and I'm sure Chief Hilton probably is going to demand the same thing from uh, his part-time personnel and his uh, reserves. And so it does make it difficult uh, when you're going through a hiring process um, 
I guess, to meet those standards. So, uh, but I know they'll do the best they can and, and make this happen as soon as they can. So. All right. Well, thank you, Mark. Thank you. So, Will, do you have anything to say? Lisa? Um, Greg? No, uh, I don't have anything right now. Thank you. Nancy? Yeah. Okay. I do have one thing. I uh, had a citizen reach out to me. Um, they held a, an event at the train station over the weekend, and they, they uh, didn't, didn't, they were concerned about the landscaping around it, but they made a phone call and they had nothing but positive things to say about how the town responded to that. And she was, of course, concerned about, you know, people coming in from out of town and seeing that as, as Danville. So, so we appreciate, she appreciates that and certainly it's good for the town. So thank you. Okay. If that's the case, then a motion to approve the uh, claim dockets. Move to approve the claim docket. Second. 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 Everybody in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. Second. Everybody agree with that? Aye. Meet is adjourned. <laughs>